This Halloween, I wanted to explore ghost games. There's actually a lot more than I thought, um, from both being a ghost to hunting ghosts. So, with that in mind, let's just get into it. Ten games with ghosts. Let's begin with Avenging Spirit. This began in the arcades. You play as a ghost, you can possess a number of characters, all have unique abilities. Some have like magical kung fu powers, some have like a straight up gun, and you're just like trying to possess different bodies to increase your health or just to transfer yourself into something else so that you don't die in the body of the one that you're possessing. It's a simple kind of uh, shooter slash beat-em-up uh, pretty cool, uh, especially for a very, very young age in uh, video games and, uh, you know, exploring uh, what it is to be a ghost in a video game or one way that one person can play as a ghost. So Avenging Spirits is pretty good. You should definitely check it out. Bubble Ghost is a little bit more simple. You are playing as a ghost. You're trying to push this bubble through this maze of things that will kill you though as you're a ghost I don't know why these things are killing you because you're dead already it's the cute kind of puzzler uh, it's a ghost I just threw it in there because it's a ghost so what do you want from me next up we have Fatal Frame which is kind of in recent news as a new game just released on the Wii U uh, this is the original game on the PS2 and it's not so much you being a ghost as you capturing ghosts with your camera. A pretty neat concept for a video game uh, tool or weapon. You're uh, exploring this old abandoned uh, site in Japan. You have a lot of mythical type ghosts and demons around. Um, and you're using this magical spirit camera to basically weaken ghosts and kind of like capture them. Uh, very Ghostbusters-y, uh, pretty unique, uh, especially for um, PS2 era where there's like a tons and tons of like awesome horror games. And this was uh, one that continues to grow, although with the latest release maybe not in a positive way, but it's still a neat franchise to look into. And here we have Geist for the GameCube. Now you start off as an agent infiltrated in this factory where like this weird demon comes out and you somehow get sucked into this portal where you become like a temporal ghost thing and you can possess uh, objects to scare people and you can also possess bodies like you're trying to go into people's uh, bodies like soldiers to gain access to new areas and to also like uh, make a stealth so it's all about you going across like both the universe of like the dead and swirling around <laughs> some weird stuff and then trying to figure out what's really going on with like this big huge chaotic mess it's an interesting idea to be sure and ghost hunter is a uh, off branch of sony Cambridge made this and it's essentially you are infiltrating this house It's not really a ghost thing, but then you discover there's ghosts there So you're fighting ghosts and then you get this magical powers where you can like summon ghosts to like help you out Like you can summon this one lady to like explore an area for you and you're fighting more Spectral demon-ish things than like, you know, Slimer ghosts, but you know in the world of the ghosts ghost universe that is media there's all kinds of different forms and it's cool to see different things take place and uh, ghost hunter is certainly um, along the lines of uh, the guys these two are sure very very similar in that you know they tried to make an action game out of ghost hunting or becoming ghost or something along those lines the most recent game on the list and perhaps one of my most favorite is a uh, ghost trick phantom detective which is for the Nintendo DS, and it came out in 2010. Uh, this is from the same guys that did Phoenix Wright, a light novel detective series, kind of where you play as a lawyer and you're trying to defend. It's it's really good. It's awesome and funny. And the script here is funny as well. Basically, you're like this mob guy that dies, and you can possess objects in like puzzle areas, and you can also time travel. So you are going from thing to thing and you can like manipulate them like you can make a, a table extend or you know if there's some kind of mechanic in that object you can make it do something like move a bike or something like that and then it's kind of like a uh maze or kind of Rube Goldberg device where you're trying to get from one thing of the area to another in order to like save people and where that's where the time travel comes in where 
If you successfully do something to prevent an action from happening, the bell creates a save point, and then you can travel between that save point. It's kind of complicated. I don't want to give too much of the story away, but it's an awesome and hilarious detective slash puzzle game, and I super highly recommend it. It is uh, one of my most treasured gifts as well. Okay, <laughs> let's move on from me gushing from Ghost Trick. Ghoul Patrol is a spiritual successor to a game that I played very early on in my YouTube videos for Bizarre Bits, which is Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Uh, the same thing applies here, more that it's more focused on ghouls rather than zombies and other supernatural creatures, though, you know, it's not just ghosts. But, you know, primarily, it starts off like in a mansion, you're going through uh, a bunch of levels, you're rescuing people, again, just like Zombies Ate My Neighbors, getting different weapons, and you can play co-op, and that's awesome. It's just a fun little arcade Super Nintendo game that I super, super, super highly recommend. <laughs> Let's rewind the clock a bit to Haunting on the Sega Genesis, which came out in 1993, and essentially, you are this poltergeist, poltergeist, invading this household and your mission is to possess objects basically jump into them and infect them with your like plasma ooze or whatever and so when a family member goes close to the thing like a bed or microwave whatever it'll have some neat little animation to it and your goal is to scare them from these rooms and to just do that to scare people it's very very strange but there isn't really a lot of things like this. Guys, like I said, let you possess like mop buckets and other stuff, but the goal really isn't to scare people in that, and the same with Avenging Spirit, you're just, you know, taking over bodies. This one is purely let's scare the crap out of people, and it's just kind of a neat little game to explore. Not a great game game, but uh, yeah, it is, it is what it is. Here we have Laser Ghost. Now, with a name like this, this <laughs> one should tell you that it came out in the 80s, which technically it did, a very latent cycle in 89 for the Sega Master System. It's a light gun game, kind of, where you're playing like these Ghostbuster type people, and you're trying to rescue this girl from a mansion, and she will auto walk along, and your goal is to protect her by shooting ghosts around her and stopping objects from killing her, basically. It is, one, a rough looking game, two, not an exciting game, but it has ghosts, and especially ghosts in the title, and Laser Ghost, with a name like that, it should have a better game behind it, in my opinion, but it's, it's, it's novel. Last on the list, we have Luigi's Mansion. Luigi's first, well, okay, not specifically first spin-off games, technically, because there's Mario is missing. Anyway, his first real, actual Nintendo-based spin-off. And Luigi inherits this mansion, and he's off to find Mario, who went missing in there, so it's like they took that terrible idea from the uh, first game and actually made it to something fun. And you're basically, it's like Resident Evil in that you're exploring a mansion and the grounds around it. You're hunting ghosts with Professor Egad. He gives you this like this vacuum sucker upper thing. And then, you know, that's it. And each kind of boss or different ghost type has a way to deal with it. Very cool. Uh, I prefer the second one, Dark Moon for the 3DS. It's a really good game. This one has, you know, a good concept behind it, but it's not fully formed. But still, it's definitely worth checking out, especially because Luigi's a cooler character than Mario. So there you have it. There's some 10 games based around ghosts that you can play by yourself or with a girlfriend or your boyfriend or just friends in general to have a smashing good time on Halloween. If you're not going out anywhere and you're just waiting for trick-or-treaters, hey, it's something to do. And that's what I'm here for. So join me next time. For now... Happy Halloween 2015!